welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time here, welcome. I'm Sarah aka Kintsugi Sarah and here on my channel we talk about all things education, creativity and lifestyle as I transition from living in Auckland, New Zealand to Japan somewhere. We don't know yet. <laughs> so if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button and like this video if you want more. So we are currently on about day five of the lockdown, which is our level four COVID-19 response action here in Auckland, New Zealand. Well, all of New Zealand, but I'm in Auckland. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm coming to you today wearing the most makeup I've ever worn. I tried to follow a tutorial and it failed heaps so I had to keep applying it wiping it off but I didn't like wipe the whole thing off I don't know it was a whole nightmare so if I look absolutely trash um that's that's why hey everyone okay so today I wanted to start a new segment um because as I have pointed out in this video and every other video <laughs> pretty much um I'm obsessed with education I love learning I've always loved learning I've always wanted to inspire others and be a teacher in any role that I'm doing whether or not it's you know big sister florist teacher like literal teacher I am um, I've always, always wanted to teach and inspire and pass knowledge on so I wanted to do some of that today by talking about something really fun that I really really love talking about so I thought it would be the great intro and first topic to cover in the um, let's learn segment of Kintsugi Sarah just a quick update on my status um, if you want to know more about my transition from living in New Zealand to Japan throughout this whole coronavirus nonsense then please watch the video that I will link above tomorrow is April 1st and that is actually the day I was meant to be moving so pretty emotional time I'm meant to be doing something a little different right now the suitcase is meant to be fully locked and loaded but right now it's not it's just holding my shopping bag how's you metal y'all today I wanted to talk about a neurological condition that I and many others have and that is called synesthesia I've talked about my synesthesia before I did like an article about it and some university paper I think and then I've also done an entire project for it in my company Print and Petal. I want to talk to you today about synesthesia more than about the project I did or about my personal um, relationship with synesthesia. I just wanted to talk about what it is in general so we can all sort of learn and get on the same page there. I've got my notes down below in my pretty pink and gold journal as always if you see me looking down that is why what is synesthesia it's the production of a sense impression relating to one sense or part of the body by stimulation of another sense or part of the body now that's a bit wordy um but as we go through hopefully it'll be broken down a bit more and we can all understand and as always i'm open to discussion in the comment section below if you want to learn more about it i would be happy to discuss that further for the sake of um I don't know, just for the sake of clarity and without letting my own biases influence my writing, I decided to use mostly the research that I've gathered for my wording here. I don't want my own er interpretations to colour the way that I'm sharing this information. Um, I can get to that later, but for now I just wanted to share a real black and white overview of what synesthesia is. So essentially, it's a neurological condition and it causes the brain to process data in the form of several sensations at once. Several of your senses get triggered by data. There's lots of different kinds of senses, there's lots of kind of data input that your brain, you know, receives and then and translates. I have a, a strain, I don't know. My synesthesia is called color grapheme synesthesia. Grapheme refers to letters and numbers. So when my brain receives data in the form of graphemes, my brain processes it in color. Some people don't see anything when they when they talk. Some people just, it's just words. And some people see the word itself. For me, color flashes in my brain and I see it you know in the same way that you see your dreams at night I see it clear as day um when I'm talking right now like it's in fact I'm, what I might do is um okay how about this um on Monday Sarah went to the farm and got some eggs there's lots of different types of synesthesia um I only know the name of one other type and that is called chromesthesia um, that's one that very many famous musicians have including Kanye West and Lord now that is sound to color so that means that when you're hearing a song the song could be blue or the song could be pink or it could be brown or god knows what I don't know how many there are I guess technically speaking any kind of data that your brain receives which is literally any information that you take in in your entire life could be received as one of your other senses so yeah it's a condition 
that you're usually either born with or you develop in childhood. There's very, very few cases in the world of people developing synesthesia in adulthood or in their later years. Um, so yeah, for that reason, if you're a synesthete, which is what they call us, you should know that you're a synesthete by adulthood. Um, even at late teenage years, you should probably know it. Even if, like me, you didn't know that it, it's what it's called. You should just know that something's going on there. You know, lots of people go through their whole lives not realizing that this is something unique to them because it's not really something that you communicate daily. Like no one's ever like, oh, do you remember how red Monday is? Like people don't talk about that. And this bit, I suppose I have to refer to my own personal experiences. This is a very, very common question. What is it like to have synesthesia? And I have to say it's more fun than anything. It comes with some issues, but overall I enjoy having synesthesia, especially now that I know what it's called. However, it was always frustrating, not realizing that not everyone could understand me or not realizing why other people couldn't understand me. I'm pretty sure that I developed synesthesia in my early childhood. I have memories dating back to as early as um, like year one of having like a really, 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 really strong relationship with color. Everyone would like call me a little artist. I really, really loved art and I loved making and I loved color and creating. And I think a big part of that influence was because I had this strong relationship with color because color was constantly present in my life, in my brain. And so for every single micro little thing that I learned, color, 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 <laughs> it was a lot. And I wasn't even hyper aware of it. It was more of a, it was a thing that just existed. I didn't give a shit about it. It was something that more came to light when I was struggling with things and I couldn't quite understand, I couldn't understand why things were harder for me. For example, maths. I always thought to myself, surely I'm dyslexic. Yes, as I said, I got really interested in art. It was hard because I learned about art. I, you know, say art in the six year old sense. I was working with color constantly, maybe even more than children typically do. Because of that, I, I learned at a very, very early age that there's very strong relationships with color and meaning. I was very hyper aware of that always. So, and I think a lot of synesthetes are. So I was always interested in creativity as far as art goes, but also as far as reading and writing goes. So metaphors and hidden meanings are something that was also very much ingrained in the way that I was learning. The most basic um, color relationships we can probably think of in Western society is pink equals girl, boy equals blue. It's just one of those things that it was hard for me to separate the color from the fact. So I had my real world understanding of something and then I had my interpretation of something. It was really hard, especially when it came to numbers. So for me, zero is white. Sometimes it can be blue. A lot of the time it can be blue, but it's more white and it's influenced by the color next to it. So for example, if it's paired of two, which is bright yellow, it becomes a very pale, pale yellow. So yes, zero is white, four is red. So essentially, white plus red mathematically it's four but white plus red also equals pink but eight is pink and zero plus four doesn't equal pink and i know that it's just like oh shit stop overthinking it but i can't i can't it's just it's like an automatic interpretation of it it's like a whole other language that my brain is having to convert it was really exhausting as a child and especially in high school when maths got a lot harder yeah for me to differentiate these different things and these different meanings another one for me is that seven seven's like a dark pur like a cadbury purple sometimes it can be like a brownie purple um but a lot of the time it's more like a cadbury purple um and we all know seven plus seven is 14 so easy but at the same time, seven and nine are the exact same color. God knows why. I don't know why my brain was like, hey, let's just fuck her up. But seven plus nine are the same color. So as a kid, seven plus seven is 14, but seven and nine isn't 14. But in my brain, they are exactly the same looking things. I have to actively think to convert the shades of purple into the accurate number that they represent, which is so confusing and it's beyond my control. That's one of the hardest parts of this for me. And how do you explain that to your teacher? How do you go, oh miss, I can't get the, the answers right because the colors don't match. The hardest one for me is my biggest color association is a really, really dark forest green and that's five and F. Th those, are, those are the same thing for me. A five and the letter F are the same. Like if someone's name was Fred, I would be tempted to write the number F. So fuck, see? I would be tempted to write the number five instead of an F when spelling their name. That's the very much the strongest color relationship besides eight and S, which are both the same exact shade of pink, but because they're shaped the same, I can always sort of stay on top of that one. If you imagine I've got a five and I've got F, that are like literally the same thing to me. And I'm trying to do algebra. That's so hard. <laughs> algebra was the word, like everything was fine. Long division started to get hard for me. I couldn't get the hang of it. And as I said, I, 
I can't explain that to a teacher. I didn't know I had something called synesthesia. I didn't know that I had anything different. I just thought I was dumb. I mean, let's be honest, there was probably a little bit of that too. In terms of how it has affected me, I guess, and, and how it might affect many people with synesthesia, I'm a bit of an introvert. I know that's weird because I'm like literally here broadcasting myself, but I'm also like alone and there's not actually anyone in front of me but a camera. So I'm not shy, but I also like my alone time. I like to be by myself and my social gauge fills up so quickly. I'll be like talking with people or socializing and it's like boop, 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 boop. Okay, you're done for the next week. Like it has cost me like a friendship or two where the expectation for communication was entirely different, but it's like, I'm good. I, I think that a part of the reason I became like that and more introverted and, and withdrawn is that I've had to spend a lot of time up here to understand up here because I mean, aside from my own like mental health struggles, <laughs> like it's actually been really frustrating to like not understand why I am the way I am. I've had to be very introspective to learn about it and to, to decipher myself. You know, as I said, there's these colour relationships that I have. Um, we all know, if we're talking in a real literal sense, you know, blue is cold or blue is boy or pink is feminine or red is hot, you know, depending on the context. And that's the same for everyday things in my life. Days of the week can have emotions because colour has emotion. And people's names, personalities, they have colour and that's affected too. It's not just the synesthesia that's making it hard, it's the language of the colours. You could, if, are you confused? Imagine being six and having that. And being like, why is that boy called Steve? S is for girls. I mean, it's hard to explain. You can see that I'm struggling to explain this. Essentially, that's what it was. It was hard to explain to myself, to everyone. So I think that my own company was easier and is still easier. And I'm, I'm very much happy that way. This isn't a complaint or an excuse or anything. It's just a little bit of a explanation of how synesthesia could have affected me. I'm not saying that I can like see auras or anything or spiritual. It's just that if somebody is a color and that color is giving me bad vibes, then, ah, oh, see, I don't know. It's hard because I, I literally have no idea what came first. Did the people influence my color theory and then I projected that onto the human based on my experience of them? Or is it the other way around? Chicken or egg, chicken or egg. Okay, here's actually an example I've written down just because I knew that I'd get here and be all like, what am I talking about? Um, so for example, blue is a masculine color for me, for many people, especially navy blue. I remember growing up through most of primary school, I literally thought the only colors girls were allowed were pink and purple. Like I actually thought that, like every other color was a boy's color. I don't know where I got the, I'm sure I got these ideas from somewhere, maybe it was too much um, exposure to pop culture or something. Yeah, something happened. And I think I just, I was really, really perceptive of that sort of thing. Further affected my synesthesia and the way that I associated certain things. And an example of that is um, the letter J. Not even just the letter J, the letter D, J and R, not, I was gonna say blue, J and R, are all a dark blue. D is slightly different to them, but J and R are the same thing. Anyway, when I did my project on synesthesia, my dad is called Brent, and his name is a pale yellow. Brent, B, pale yellow. But what kid calls their, their dad Brent, you know, or like whoever your dad's name is. To me, he was dad. So when my dad saw the pale yellow, I think he was like, oh, what, that's not me. Cause like, you know, my dad, I wouldn't describe with the attributes of pale yellow. I was like, well, no, you're not pale yellow, you're dark blue because you're dad. Dad is a masculine word. It's a masculine color. And then I've got J, my brother's called Josh. So like that was also, an influence so it's striking to me that the two primary male figures in my life are my dad my brother DJ and they're both dark blue maybe I'm not explaining that as beautifully as I could but there's definitely a connection there that I recognize furthermore my name's Sarah I grew up very very hyper feminine but as you can see behind me I love floral I love pink I identify very very happily and confidently as ultra feminine that is a conscious choice of mine but it's also something that I'm deeply rooted in because of my synesthesia because yes is pink like, it's, it's not even up for conversation when I did my project and um, I might insert some of these as I go but as I did my um, project S was the most satisfying one for me because apart from A, it is the most accurate depiction, like in terms of color. It's it's hard when I've got things like that dark blue of D, J and R and then that hot pink of S and they have these so strong, consistent, never failing connotations of masculinity and femininity. Not everything that starts with D or, you know, like Saturday is bright pink for me. Thursday and um, Tuesday's like a pale blue, but Thursday's like a really dark blue. But like, what's masculine about Thursday? What's feminine about Saturday? I don't know, but 
those are the auras of those days for me. It doesn't mean that I like am masculine on Thursdays and like feminine on Saturdays or anything like that. That could be fun. Treating each day of the week like the aura that it provides me. I've just started to say aura for the sake of this video because that's what I'm feeling is going to be the easiest to communicate the vibe. Days, people's words, numbers, did I say peoples? Anyway, it's all vibes. So essentially every single thing in my life has a double, triple, quadruple meaning. Um, no, it just mostly has a double meaning. So we've got its literal meaning and then it's got its synesthesia meaning. Uh, for example, S. S is just the letter S. Any normal person, it's just S is S. However, it also has the meanings that I've just gone over with you. It's a bit to juggle. Sometimes I just feel like I'm a little bit off or a little bit hard to relate to or a little bit... Um, <sighs> just so quirky um and i really wanted to add this note in um towards the end here is that if you are a parent or a teacher to a child with synesthesia i think it could be really interesting for you to have a think about uh, to have a think about what i've talked about in this video i wished my parents knew and I remember I tried to explain it to people, I've tried to explain it to friends. I definitely wish um, that more people understood. <laughs> Teachers might have adap somehow adapted, I don't know how they would have. It's hard being hard on yourself when you can't help the reason that you're failing. I think a way that you could identify if a child has synesthesia is if you ask them about colour relationship. What what colour is this, what colour is that. I'm sure as a child I said S was green, S was blue a million times over. Um, and it might be hard for you to get a consistent answer from kids but a lot of the time if you if they know they know i just this is this is a commonly asked question it's s for me every synesthete will have a different color we are not we're not all connected this is people ask me that all the time like fuck that would be cool if like me and all the synesthetes in the world were just like pink green orange orange blue that doesn't spell any word just in case you're wondering no it doesn't a giveaway would be if you consider that a child might have dyslexia you know for example you've been you've had them tested for dyslexia but they're still mi mixing things up that's how i felt i used to tell people oh i'm like dyslexic but i'm not because i could read and write perfectly fine and it was hard for me to order my thoughts a lot of the time that's why i loved writing so much in fact because i could on paper you know once it's out of here it's not color it's just pages and that was really satisfying for me that's just something that i think you could look out for in kids i just want to yeah i just want to i guess finish this video by saying that synesthesia is a fabulous thing it's um it's definitely not a burden it has caused me some difficulties which i'm really pointing out here for the sake of interest um however all in all it's not really caused me any grief maybe if i wanted to be an accountant um, or a scientist or something that actively used more maths then i would have struggled more but as an artist i had the skill set the foundations the interest to take these gifts and convert them i meant the gift of synesthesia i'm not trying to be all wanky about my art skills but yeah take my gifts of synesthesia and convert them to a practical um a practical skill and i don't know if i did that because of the synesthesia or i did that in spite of the synesthesia you know it's if you do have synesthesia embrace it learn about it experiment with it for me it wasn't until i did my big project on synesthesia that i understood the relationships i had were as strong as they were doing that project helped me understand my brain a lot more um and bring clarity to the situation anyway so <laughs> i know that was a bit of a ranty rambly video but yeah you know i'm in isolation so i thought why not let's have a chat about this and i hope that you enjoyed it i don't know if it's relatable to you and you might just not find it very interesting at all if that's the case i'm really sorry a lot of people ask me about it when they learn that I have it. I just thought talking about colour would bring some brightness to your world. I'm thinking I'll probably make a part two to this video based on the project that I did. I went through every single letter of the alphabet. I drew it floral in that colour that it actually relates to and then I also discussed the relationship that that color has um it's frustrating it's difficult but it's also very very fun so if you want to learn more about the way that works then stay tuned for the next time i make a video on my synesthesia until then have a very safe and comfortable and fun isolation enjoy your own company learn about yourself and stay educated everyone stay safe and thanks for watching arigato gozaimasu